Hey guys, how are you? Today is Thursday, March the 2nd. Um, we still have a first quarter moon. You can see a little over 66% of the moon if you go outside and look tonight. The happy news is it is going to be a nice day today. So uh, it's supposed to be sunny and in the mid 60s. So I think it's a perfect day to get outside and learn a little bit. So if you go to your assignments, the first thing you're going to see is an outside scavenger hunt. So that's an assignment today. I want you to go outside and do the scavenger hunt. You don't have to do it first thing, but when it's nice and sunny and it's warmed up for the day, go outside and, and uh, complete the scavenger hunt. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Um, today we're going to complete um, the first half of the cumulative review. Uh, so remember after every even number unit we complete a cumulative review so we're gonna do this the same way that we did the unit test yesterday where we are going to get rid of the practice test you can recycle that this is, it says unit 8 cumulative review that's the practice test so recycle that and then we're gonna do 1 through 10 on the cumulative review and this is what that looks like it says Unit 8 Cumulative Assessment. That's the test we're going to take today. We're only going to do the first half. So we're going to do 1 through 10 today. And I'm going to go through with it, uh, go through it with you step by step, okay? So anytime you need to pause my video, just stop it and complete the problem, and then we can go on together, all right? All right, so this says, I'm going to put my glasses on. Sorry, need those because I'm old. Um, write a number model. Use a letter for what you want to find out. You may complete the diagram to help. So that says you may. Solve. Then write the number model with your answer to check your work. The, so let's read the problem for number one together. Is everybody ready? It says Lori bought seven boxes of pencils. There were eight pencils per box. So that sounds like boxes or groups. We know that for multiplication, right? So seven groups, seven boxes of eight pencils. What does that sound like to you? Seven groups of eight. That's right, it sounds like a multiplication problem. So it says how many pencils did she buy in all? So let's see what we know. Do we know how many boxes that Lori bought? Yes, seven. Do we know how many pencils are in each box? Eight. How many pencils in all? Do we know that yet? Nope, but we're gonna find out. So that's gonna be the unknown. So now they want us to use a letter. So since we're looking for pencils, we're going to use P for pencils. Okay? Then you're going to write your number model. Seven groups of eight equals P. So how would we write that? Uh, down here you can make an array if you'd like to. You can make a seven uh, row array with eight in each row. And then you're going to tell me how many are there are in all. How many pencils, don't forget to label your units in all. And then down here, you're going to write the number model one more time, but this instead of this time writing P, you're going to write the product of 7 times 8. Okay? That's number one. Number two is on the next page. Ready to go over that with me? Okay, number two says, the art teacher shared 40 balls of yarn equally. Oh, we're sharing equally. What does that mean? That's right. You remembered. It means that we're dividing. That's right. Good job. So we shared 40 balls of yarn equally among 10 children. That means we're going to divide 40 into 10 equal groups. Um, so the, I'm going to read it one more time. The art teacher shared 40 balls of yarn equally among the 10 children in the art club. How many balls of yarn did each child get? So do we know how many children there are? That's right. There's 10. Do we know how many balls of yarn each child gets? Not yet. That's what we're going to find out. And then it says balls of yarn in all. Do we know that? Let's read it again. The art teacher shared 40 balls of yarn. So yes, we know there are 40 balls of yarn in all. So go ahead and fill that chart in. And it says how many balls of yarn did each child get? So you can either write the B stands for balls of yarn or just Y stands for yarn. Either one is okay with me. And then we're going to write our division number model. 40 shared equally into 10 groups equals how many per group? So you're going to write 40 divided by 10 equals B or Y, okay? And then for this one, you can make 10 boxes for the 10 children and share the 40, uh, the 40 
balls of yarn among those 10 children. That's going to be your diagram that you draw for me, your picture. And then tell me how many balls of yarn each child got. Don't forget to label your units, balls of yarn. And then you're going to write the number model one more time with this time instead of the letter, the answer, the quotient. That's the answer for a division problem. All right, then you're going to very carefully fill in the blanks. So make sure you read these really carefully. Seven times what number equals 28? That's a missing factor problem. B says what number equals 8 times 7? So you could turn that around and say 8 times 7 equals what? What number times 9 equals 27? Another missing factor problem. 42 equals what number times 7? So what number times 7 equals 42? Okay, then it says if 9 times blank equals 36, then 36 divided by 9 equals blank. Ooh, that's a fact family problem. So if you remember your fact families, 9 times what equals 36, and then 36 divided by what equals 9. Okay, you're going to do the same thing here. If, what, if blank times 7 equals 63, then 63 divided by 7 equals blank. Another fact family. So these are going to be the same numbers. G is if 8 times blank equals 72, then 72 divided by blank equals 8. So once again, fact family, these numbers are going to be the same number. All right, now we're going to use the break apart strategy. Do you remember when we did that together? We're going to break a bigger number into two smaller numbers. So here I have 7 times 9, and it says AJ used the break apart strategy to solve 7 times 9 by breaking 9 into the easier numbers 5 and 4. So what we're going to do is we're going to have AJ multiply these two smaller rectangles. So 7 times 5 plus 7 times 4. So show me all the steps you used for that. You guys remembered it. You're really good at it. I know you guys um, can do that. So show me the three steps. 7 times 5, 7 times 4. Add the two smaller rectangles together, and you find the answer for 7 times 9. Then you're going to fill in the blanks. You have a division problem and look and see what you're having, look really carefully and see what you're filling in, okay? Make sure you're reading the problem super carefully and slowly. That was number five. Now we're on number six. This problem says Nathan has five bags of marbles. Each bag has four yellow marbles and six red marbles. How many marbles does Nathan have in all? This is a two-part problem, so we're going to be using parentheses for it. So the first thing, it says M, the letter M represents the number of marbles Nathan has. So underline the number model that fits the story. So there's five bags in all, that's five groups of marbles, and in each bag there's four plus six. So you're going to have to find out what's four plus six and then multiply that by five bags of marbles, okay? So take your time with that, think about how we do it, draw a picture to help, and write your answer down here with marbles. And then write a number model with your answer to check your work. All right, number seven. Ooh, these are fun. This is the box where you're going to look and see um, if all of these number models name 18. Okay, so number seven. Add at least two more names with parentheses that belong in the name collection box below. So first you have to cross out, there's going to be names that don't belong. So there's some of these that shouldn't be there. Remember, you're going to solve the problem in the parentheses first and then solve the rest of the problem. See if this equals 18 each time. If it doesn't equal 18, cross it out. If it does, leave it alone. And then you, this is the tricky part because then we, a lot of times we think, oh, I crossed out the ones that don't belong and I'm going on to the next problem but this is a two-step problem. You also have to add two more names using parentheses to the name collection box, and your number models have to equal 18, okay? Um, number eight says, for each problem, make an estimate and solve. I'd like you to round to the nearest 10. So 539 plus 358, so you're going to round for your estimate. 539 rounds to what when you're rounding to the nearest 10? And then 358 rounds to what when you're rounding to the nearest 10? And then you're going to add those together and find your estimate. You're going to do the same thing here. Now look, this is a subtraction problem and they haven't stacked it up. What do you have to do? You have to stack it up, right. So you're going to find your estimate, stack up the estimate too by rounding to the nearest 10, 
and then solve it again by stacking it up and finding your exact answer. So you have to, these are both two steps. Round, solve for the ballpark estimate, then add the exact numbers here, and then down here, once again, uh, find your ballpark estimate by rounding these to the nearest 10 and subtracting them this time. Remember this one I want you to stack up. That means I want you to make it vertical. Right now it's horizontal. And then I want you to make another vertical problem with the exact numbers and find the exact answer. So those are both two-step problems. Take your time. You can totally do it. Here, you're going to partition the circle into eight equal parts. So I always start by, remember, partitioning it in half. And then you can partition it again, and then you have fourths. And then if you divide the fourths in half, you have automatically have eighths, just like a piece of pie. Um, label each part. That's a two-step problem again. So first you have to partition it into eight equal parts. Then you have to label each part. So each part of those needs a fraction. How many out of eight is each part? Then they want you to shade three-fourths of the circle. Even though it's divided into eighths, you, need, you still can think of it divided into fourths. What would three-fourths of the circle look like shaded in? Then you're going to look at the unshaded part. What's left over? Once you've shaded in three-fourths, what part is not shaded in? And you're going to write that, and then you're going to write an equivalent fraction for the unshaded part. Okay? The last one, look really carefully. Remember the short hand is the hour hand and the long hand is the minute hand. We've gotten really good at telling time this year. We've practiced it a lot. Write the time to the nearest minute. And for this one, you need to draw the hour and minute hands to show the time. Ooh, this is tricky. Listen, 15 minutes before 927. So maybe draw a number line and go earlier. What time was it before, 15 minutes before it was 927? Then you have to draw that time, draw the hour and minute hands for that time, not 927, 15 minutes before 927. Hour and minute hands here, and then tell me what time your clock shows. What time was it 15 minutes before 927? That's it for math today. Save this, and we're going to do the second part of it tomorrow. Okay? Um, you can go ahead and have mom and dad text me the first 10 problems. That way it'll be a little easier for me to check. I won't have all 20 problems at once. Um, and Or you can upload it to our Google Classroom, and that one, then I'll check the first half of the test tonight. Um, the next thing we're going to do today, so, so far we have scavenger hunt, the first half of the cumulative review, the first 10 problems of the cumulative assessment. I should say that. Okay. And then we have a little packet the Your Turn Packet. And this is another story, another realistic fiction story, where people reuse something to make something new. So this is a story called The Jar Garden. Remember when we read this together, um, if you have a friend in the class that you think um, wouldn't mind their parents having you call them and you guys want to partner read this, I think that would be a great idea. So if you have a friend in the class you'd like to call and partner read, or you can read it, partner read it with mom and dad. If that's easier for you, um, take turns reading, just to tell mom and dad, this is how we do in class. I read a paragraph, you read a paragraph. Okay, so Jar Garden is a short story. It's just the front and back of this. And then you're just going to answer three short questions about the Jar Garden. Um, you're going to tell me Jesse's point of view. How does Jesse feel about the playground and its condition in paragraph two? What is Hank's point of view? So we're looking at the point of view of all the characters. How do they feel about the situation? What is Hank's point of view about Jesse and the playground in paragraphs 6 and 7? And then the third one is, how do Hank and Jesse feel about cleaning up the playground and making it a garden at the end of the passage? It's the very last part of the story. You do not need to do this part down here, part B. Just You can just draw a little line through that. And then the last thing we're going to do, you know we talked about homographs um, this week. We talked about words that are spelled the same and sometimes sound the same, but they have different meanings. So we have the word um, bear, and I don't think they're talking about the mammal with fur that lives in Yellowstone and out west. I think they're talking about something else. So it says, Jesse was from the country and could not bear to see the playground in this condition. Does that mean like a bear, like, or does that mean she couldn't stand it? She couldn't bear it. Okay, talk about mom, with that with mom and dad. Then number two says, after a few weeks, though, the playground was filled with garbage again, so we had no choice but to desert it. That looks like desert, um, but it's dessert. And do you know what dessert means? 
it means you know, I'm not talking about dessert, like brownies and ice cream and stuff after you eat dinner. We're talking about leaving something, right? Leaving something alone. Abandoning it. That's a big word. Um, a few old garden tools and watering cans were there. Oh, a watering can were there. So they're talking about like you can do something, you're able to do something. Or are they talking about a container that holds water? So decide what they mean by can there. And then as the day went on, some of Hank's friends walked by and saw what they were doing. Are they talking about a saw like sh -sh -sh saw? And the last one is they lined up the jars in a row and put water in them. What are they talking about there? What kind of row are they talking about? Are they talking about like a straight line kind of row? Or are they talking about like row your boat? So think about that. Here, are they talking about the past tense of seeing with your eyes or the tool that mom and dad would use to saw wood? So talk about that with your mom and dad. And let me see. In our packet, it's Thursday, so tomorrow's our spelling test. So go over your spelling words with mom and dad. And then, let's see. I think... Okay, let's look at this. Okay, so let's just do page... 108 today in the grammar, just page 108. And it says, replace each underlined word or group of words with the correct subject or object pronoun. Write the new sentences. So let me just go over the first one with you. My grandmother took my brother and me to Washington, D.C. So could you, who could you replace my grandmother with? She, right? She took my brother and me. Since you're in the sentence, would you say them or us? Us, right. So she took us to Washington, D.C., and you're just going to rewrite that on the line using the pronouns, okay? You're going to do the same thing. So just page 108. I know there's more grammar pages. I'm not going to worry about them today. All right, so scavenger hunt, 10 problems in the math, your turn packet, partner read jar garden with either mom or dad or a friend on the phone. I think it's a good idea to reach out to your friends right now, right? And then page 108 for grammar. That's it for me today. I hope you have a fantastic day. And call me if you need any help with the math or text me or FaceTime me. Okay? You guys take care. Bye.